It is now mid-year and some interesting vehicles, electric vehicles, are starting to hit the market. And one of them is coming from a player that could be interesting in the EV space very soon, and that is Volvo. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Tech Path. And of course, today, let's jump into it. Let's go into the Volvo Concept Recharge vehicle, which is their next gen of the Volvo fully electric car fleet. It's the first of which, which is going to be the company's SUV on a completely new electric only technology base, which is going to be, you know, I think this is where the direction of where Volvo and many of these European manufacturers are going and trying to move in this direction. Obviously, we've seen the things, uh, some of the advancements from uh, VW, which has done a great job on both the ID4 and the ID5. The design of the concept recharge will likely be similar to that of electric, their electric vehicle XC90, which is the successor. That one's actually coming out later next year. So we'll see how that kind of comes together. And a lot of the videos that I was able to dive into um, really kind of go into the concept, design, the battery tech, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of innovation here. And then of course they do uh, cut into the actual vehicle itself on their uh, prototype model, which is kind of cool. Volvo's exist existing EV, such as the XC40 uh, recharge are still based around architecture designed on the internal combustion engines, meaning the vehicles are still largely, you know, ice and then package requirements of gas, gas cars, which is a big problem as we all know in terms of the future, but also in terms of how these vehicles particular around, especially some of the, when you look at some of the Volvo, Volvo hybrids, uh, this does have the flat floor. Listen, I think from a Tesla owner and driver, we have the flat floor. So it's, yes, I think all of these concept vehicles and all the vehicles coming in the future, interior designs are gonna be much more pay, uh, you know, spacious, much more inviting. And I think the design opportunities are there for really cool designers to come up with some very interesting UI. There is gonna be an extended wheelbase uh, and wheel size on this car. Uh, a lot more interior space, including a large storage area between the front seats. They're gonna reposition the seats. They're gonna optimize the roof profile and then lower the hood of the vehicle uh, while retaining the high, the high eye line, which is very important for SUVs, especially here in, in the US. I think that's why a lot of people buy the SUVs. And then the Volvo XC40, XC60 and the XC90 are the key things that they're trying to pair up against. Meaning these are the hot cars that's in the Volvo lineup right now. And it's what people really love and especially around where it's going. So the unnecessary elements have been removed. You also have traditional grill that's been replaced with a shield-like structure, much like a Tesla. It has that front, you know, kind of big panel, so to speak. I won't call it, it looks sexier, but it definitely is more of a shield kind of structure supported by a new interpretation of Volvo's cars, Thor's hammer headlight design. Everybody knows that look. Uh, which I like. I like that car, even though a lot of people still look at Volvo as a little bit more conservative. The point is, is I think their design cues and some of the things they're especially doing in this uh, version is really pretty cool. Uh, signature vertical rear lamps. Also, when you look at the car from behind, has a lot of the same design heritage that's already kind of put in place in, in Volvo. So I think a lot of that came over very nicely. Uh, this one is going to extend better cruising speeds. So it's going to, you know, I think you're going to get, see a lot more aerodynamics aspects of this, especially with the fact that this roof line almost is, you know, has this very long sloping angular approach toward, um, you know, just an aerodynamic look, which I think is going to be helpful. And of course, as an electric vehicle, you definitely help because of the ability for it to be able to get more range. That's going to be a big thing. 15 inch standing touchscreen in the center vertical mounted, which is interesting. They went this route. I mean, we've seen that with the Ford Mach-E, but Tesla has moved over to the landscape model, which is interesting as well on how that's going to kind of play, play into both the Model 3, Y, and the X and the S. So that'll be interesting to see how that kind of continues to develop. Uh, it is kind of a clean line and very extensive use of sustainable and natural materials inside the cabin. I think that is a theme that we are going to see for quite some time. Another thing that they are doing, and they, there's some videos out on this with their research for their battery technology in phases and basically getting to a point where they're going to go vertical integration. And what I mean by that 
is they're going to start making their own batteries. And I think every car maker out there is now moving into an aggressive race for battery tech development. So much like Tesla has done with the 4680 and trying to get to a state in which they can go in that route, you look at BYD, who's BYD the Chinese automaker, who's already a heavily vertically integrated, probably more so than any other company out there. And then you have a lot of companies like Ford and even GM who are starting to move in this direction. So I think that's gonna be table stakes within five years for all manufacturers. And I think that's gonna be a big factor. The question will be how well the technology team at Volvo can start to truly bring on more innovation in the battery side. That's the thing that I'm very excited about, both from the Europeans, because this is gonna flow over to BMW, Mercedes, and a lot within that European manufacturing community that I think could make for some interesting competition around innovation on both range, capacity, charging speeds, and just the comfort ability of that vehicle because you're dealing with different weight capacity, which is gonna be dealing with aerodynamics and then obviously range. I even heard them mention that there could be, and I don't know if this is this car or if it's just them trying to achieve, but a thousand kilometers within their battery tech. So if there is a battery tech that is even remotely close to that, first of all, I think it's overkill. I think the 500 mile range number, really 400, is the magic for being able to get these EVs uh, really heavily adopted into the next level uh, of you know, society. And I think that's gonna come both from the European community, which is already very heavy, uh, probably the number two market place in the world behind China. And then of course, the United States, which is very under adopted right now in terms of where that uh, future is go, but heavily uh, biased toward Tesla as the kind of the core uh, EV vehicle that's out there. However, I think Volvo, if they come to market with this, when they come to market with this, this could definitely, from a design standpoint, if they come out with their battery tech, this has definitely got some potential future here in the US. Here's the other thing. LiDAR sensor built by technology company Luminar, and we've talked about them before on the show. Luminar, if you have not been watching, I mean, they've kind of have a little bit of a rocky road on their uh, stock price, but this company has got some very interesting tech in terms of LiDAR and how they're, you know, how they're going about it. We're also seeing that with companies like Invisix, which we've had their CEO on our show here talking about where that potentially could go in the future. There's a lot of potential. Now, all this is coming out at a time when Tesla is actually removing radar and LiDAR equipment out of their vehicles, radar primarily, uh, and going to a full camera system, Tesla Vision, we just did a video on this and where this could be taking them. And it's gonna be interesting to see how this comes together. But their approach is Luminar will be a critical part of the Volvo cars plan for the forthcoming safe autonomous drive technology. So that tells me they're moving in the right direction. And there are two camps in this. You've got Elon's camp, which has gone the direction of Tesla Vision, all using cam cameras to essentially take data feeds versus the LiDAR route that is utilizing that in addition to cameras to help solve the problem. I've always kind of leaned on the model of using additional sensors and often wondered why, if the sensor cost is going down, and I, and I still have not really got a clear answer, at least from my understanding of what, te of what Tesla and Elon have explained, why not have it in the vehicle if, it's, if it can be utilized? Now, sure, there is software applications that have to apply to that. And of course, you have to be able to take that feedback and then decipher it. It does require computing power. There's a lot of things that are on the underlying architecture of a vehicle that does uh, have to do that. So it'll be interesting to see if Volvo can take that tech massage it together, and then build out an autonomy site. Listen, this is very early for Volvo in terms of where their movement is going. Are they behind the eight ball in terms of catching up with some of the other players? I think a little bit in, in terms of where BMW and Mercedes who have already, especially Mercedes, their EQS lineup is getting, you know, it, they're accelerating quickly into market releases. And I think the same is gonna be happening with BMW trying to get to the EV race. And then of course you have uh, Tesla who seems to be at lumbering a little bit in the sense of 
we need the 4680, you've got to get the factories open and we need to get the pickup on the market. And then of course the compact is going to be the next factor for Tesla. So are they behind Volvo? I would say a little bit, they're lagging a little bit, but what I have found in watching and studying the EV category as much as we do here on TechPath is that companies can write their ship pretty quickly because the innovation happens very fast and we're seeing a ton of engineers and key executives start to move around in the space. And that is gonna be the difference, I think, in the future of a lot of these manufacturers entering into the space is how well they hire and how well they look at innovation and adoption of innovation and also failing fast because they're gonna have to figure out what works and doesn't work, get rid of it, much like Tesla did. Tesla did, Tesla had about five years of run-ups on things that they've completely changed and shifted outside of their design themes. And obviously all things have been leading toward where we are today with Tesla's design, which I would still say is the state-of-the-art operating system and system uh, in terms of design when it comes to EV. So with Volvo, you gotta check out these videos. This is a, an amazing vehicle. I like what I'm seeing, the design elements, the UI elements, the battery tech, the Luminar integration with, um, I, I don't know, I'm still a little bit back and forth on whether or not that's gonna make for the best and most efficient because the idea is, remember, you've got AI implementing into this and at some point, we're going to have an AI supercomputer in these vehicles to enable full self-driving and full autonomy. Uh, and I think that is gonna be the key. Whether that goes with vision or whether that goes with, you know, things like LiDAR and radar will be the question. Watch it close, make sure and stay tuned right here for more coverage as we, we break out cars like this all the time, especially in the EV space. Obviously, we don't really cover much in the ICE side because we're after the tech space here on TechPath, obviously we cover cryptocurrency, blockchain, all things EV, autonomy, and of course robotics and where we're seeing AI go in the future. If you're listening over on our podcast right now, make sure and give us some stars. We'd love to get your feedback over there. If you're here on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. This is the number one place to come for all technology because it's all starting to center into one place. It's called TechPath. My name is Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath. Thank <laughs> you.